be real quick. I just want to take a, a <clears throat> brief moment to discuss the, the latest developments in the Charday Robinson case. Uh, someone asked me, I believe it was yesterday, asked me in a comment on another video uh, to address this story. And so the story is a year in the making, but it is a devastating story that is still developing. We have charges now on Maxwell Anderson, uh, the person that Charday had a date with, the last person to see alive. Uh, he has been charged. So we're going to talk about that. Uh, you know the routine. If you like what you hear and see, click the like button, click the share button, subscribe. For the people who follow us and see the ma uh, the massive work we do in the community in the area of research, program development, program implementation, advocacy in academics and school systems, advocacy in the courtroom, uh, adv advocacy for abused and battered women, and so much more, look in the description box and give. The programs that we provide, the work that we do, uh, has to be resourced and we're asking you to support that. So that's that. For those of you who don't know who Sade Robinson is, she was a 19 year old girl who was attending college in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, um, and studying criminal justice of all things. And she met a white guy online and you can decide whether you want to see this along the lines of race or not because anytime I see a black woman murdered, anytime I see a black woman missing and I see the lack of intensity in the coverage by the media, the lack of the sense of urgency by the public that you normally see when it is a blonde haired white girl, I have a problem regardless to the culprit is. But there's definitely something to be said about the race. But the thing is, black women are in jeopardy and it's not just by white men. So I'm gonna have a unique perspective that will make some people uncomfortable because we can easily go for the low hanging fruit is the crazy, the crazy white man uh, killed the black girl. And we might be right on point with that in, 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 in a more of a technical sense than you can imagine uh, because the viciousness and the darkness associated with this is definitely on the lines of evil. But what we have to look at here is anytime I see a black woman senselessly killed, my whole thing is that family needs justice. That family needs a sense of having resolved the issue as far as justice for the life. I don't believe in closure because you lose someone, you're dealing with that the rest of your life. How you deal with it, the depth and intensity at which you feel the pain, the frequency as we, at which you have episodes will change and diminish over time, but you will always have an emptiness in that space. It's gone. It's can't, it cannot be filled by anything or anyone else. And that's the reality of it. But you learn how to deal with it. You develop ways of coping with it and you move on. But one of the ways that you get a head start on dealing with it is when they were senseless, senselessly killed by someone else. You can see justice happening. You see that person uh, having to pay for what they did, whatever that is. And so the first thing that comes to my mind is justice for the family. The second thing is we've lost another black woman. Um, and unfortunately, in the work that I do and in, in having to deal with this on a regular basis, I understand that while, again, the easy take on this is look at this, she shouldn't have been dating that, that guy, um, you know, for obvious reasons. She you know, should have known better. She was 19 years old. She was on an online dating site. And, and with online dating, with digital uh, access to almost anybody you want to reach out to, uh, there comes a heightened uh, risk of death. We had an Instagram model, black Instagram model, killed here in Houston. 
by a guy that followed her on an Instagram page that lived in Florida, a Hispanic guy, came all the way to Houston and murdered her. And so this is the thing. And, and could it have been a white Instagram model? Yes. Could it have been a black man that did it? Yes. But it wasn't. It was a Hispanic guy. This time it was a white guy. So, And we tend to want to be more upset when someone outside is the one that's committing the committing the heinous act. I'm the opposite. I'm more upset when it's one of ours. I'm upset, period. I'm hot. I'm 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 I'm, I'm you know, I'm livid. But when it's one of ours, the one that our women should be literally being able to depend on to protect them doing it, that's the worst form of betrayal to me. But nobody gets a pass. And nobody and, but you got to understand that's the thing you have to be aware of when you're dealing with a system that is casted based on race is because there's going to be certain benefits that simply come with being white that's going to shelter a lot of people. Uh, Brock, whatever his name, Brock Turner, the guy who's literally caught raping a woman on the side of a dumpster who's unconscious because she's inebriated and literally gets a I mean a major slap on the wrist judge doesn't think he should go to prison because it'll destroy his life but they're throwing black men in prison um, at an alarming rate for things far less worse than literally violating a woman which again goes and this wasn't a black woman that he was violating I think it may have been a Latino or uh, Western European or something like that but whatever it was it wasn't uh a black woman that I don't think she was white. She may have been, and I'm just off a little bit, but whatever the thing is, he ends up doing 90 days for something that heinous. When I'm dealing with black men who have been locked up for 15, 20, 25, 30 years for something they didn't do, and DNA evidence is not just not coming out to prove they didn't do it. Um, so obviously, yeah, that's a whole nother story, but digital access creates a whole nother thing that we've got to be more aware so then the first thing that the second thing that comes to mind after the justice thing is we've got to be more proactive in creating awareness of just how dangerous this is uh the natural surroundings the natural process of how you would normally have to meet a person get to know a person and all of this and you know now someone can get to you know, get access to you from an entirely different city, make a trip to come see you and, 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 and all these things. So the world has gotten smaller and that means people who would have normally not had access to you now has access to you and that needs to be managed. And if it's not properly managed, there are all these different types of things. This young lady went on this date with this guy it showed video shows they went out to some restaurant ate, and they, they left the restaurant and uh, allegedly went back to his apartment that's the last time anybody saw her. uh they supposedly found blood in the house um there's mixed uh reports on whether the blood was hers but whatever it is there's enough evidence where he has been charged with her murder uh, the sad thing is they found her. She was missing for a while and everybody was looking for her. And sadly, they found her, but they found her in pieces in different places. So he killed her and then he dismembered her. And the family is having to relive all of this now as the trial approaches. And so people ask me, what's your take on it? My take is you can't be present with every black woman. You can't be present with your daughter all the time. But what we can do is we can be more vigilant in preparing them, educating them, creating a sense of urgency. Because one of the things that this generation of kids have is no sense of fear. They don't fear anything. They don't think it, well, we all at a young age had that sense of being impervious to life, uh, being invincible, nothing can go wrong, but it's a different thing for them. There's no fear, there's nothing. Everything to them has been in their entire life, a digital reality where things that are happening aren't really happening. 
And so the idea that they can be taken away from this place isn't really truly setting in. The idea of finality, I don't think really rests with them in the way it does with us. We understand, man, we have one life and we're trying to live it to the fullest and as much, get as much out of it as we can. And they don't see that. They, they live in a world where their man on the game dies and they just get another man. And they live in situations where you know, you see the same situation over with, you know, somebody gets killed in a movie and you see them in the next movie and they're alive. And, you know, everything is not real. Everything is being experienced through uh, assimilation. And so they don't have any sense of real life experience. And so they get out there and they take chances. And this isn't that this couldn't have been a 35 year woman because in my studies, and I do a lot of studies on these types of killings, uh, in my studies, there have been women 35, there have been women 40. Uh, they've been every race under the sun, so it's not just black women, it's women, period. And I can tell you that it does happen, but it is more likely to happen and more mistakes are made in the sense of vetting people when it's younger, younger women. When they're younger women, it's just like, hey, he's cute and you know, and I don't know what she saw and do, not judging her, not taking back, but I don't know what she saw and do, but whatever she saw was enough to make her want to go out with him and go back to his place. Now, I don't know. This is the thing you don't know because I'm still trying to put the story together. I'm trying to get all the facts of the case so I can really draw a conclusion and bring people up to date on just how things unfolded. But what, uh, you know, is what's clear is she went back to his place what's not clear as of yet is was she somehow drugged or inebriated uh, uh un unwittingly or unbeknownst to her uh to get her to willingly or uh, in this case uh under the influence go back to his place or was she completely aware and knowledgeable of what was going on and chose to go on her own uh regardless to either way uh it still does not justify what happened to her after she got there um and i think that we need to be extremely protective of our women i think we need to be responsive uh to their situations and in some ways even reactive uh i think that that needs to be a consequence for harming a black woman. Now understand that that means even when it's a black man doing it, but it definitely needs to be a message sent out that our women are protected, that there's a consequence beyond uh, having to face uh, legal repercussions in a criminal courtroom. That's the least of your worries. That type of mindset has to go out. We find out that you doing X, Y, Z, that's your ass and that has to be the mindset we have to create a space where our women are safe and if we don't create the space where our women are safe then we can't truly function in the role of headship and leadership because one of the things that comes with that is being a protector and we want to holler about submission we want to holler about uh, not being respected. You want a woman to respect you, protect her. You want general collective respect from black women, give them a safe space to operate in. And I promise you that you will see a difference in the way they handle you. You know, there shouldn't be a time in this country where a black woman steps in the presence of a black man and is fearful. It should be literally... Uh, inculcated into our psyche. It should be impressed upon us and programmed into our neural pathways that we protect black women at all costs. And so that's the stance that I'm taking. Uh, yes, it's sad that it happened. Uh, and I, here's the other thing I do wanna say to all my young sisters out here. Uh, and, and brothers, you listen to me too, cause it applies to white women just like it applies to black men. Everybody that thinks that being with a person who is white, in this case a white man, but same thing with women, and they are more docile, less aggressive than their black counterparts, please understand that that's not the case. And I'm talking statistically. You can end up very unalive messing around with them people 
for little to no provocation. They just get tired of you and they don't want to get a divorce. They just get tired of it. They look at you and say, look, you did this to me. If they sit up and think that you did something to them that you didn't do, but they think you did it, they will unalive you and they will do it in some of the most creative and destructive ways you can possibly imagine. From poisoning to hitting you with a car to shooting you to paying somebody else to do it uh, and everything else. And this again is from my actual studies. I mean, I've seen people's mashed potatoes poison with arsenic. I've seen people blow ethylene glycol, which is what goes in the antifreeze, into people's tea because it's sweet. I mean, and all of that, and they'll just do it like it ain't nothing. And I'm not saying that we don't have issues and there's not violence in our community. I'm saying don't think that for one second that those people, even though that's the narrative that's pushed, the narrative that's pushed is we're more aggressive by nature and they're more docile. You got to think everything that they've got. Think about who is it theirs or is somebody had it before them? Just saying. Um, this isn't a conviction on everybody, but this is just understanding the idea that you look at them and they just, you know, because they goofy to us for the most part, goofy. And so, goofy does not mean un, not deadly. Goofy just means goofy to us. They have a system working on their behalf. And that's also a problem. When you're used to getting everything you want and you start to see it slip away in the slightest little ways and you look at it and the things that used to be a given are no longer a given, you feel uh, entitled, you act out. Whether you are pro-Trump or anti-Trump or pro-conservative, anti-conservative, that insurrection, as they are calling it, where they stormed that building in, in, in the Capitol, was white people not getting their way. Whether you agree with it or not, and I'm not taking a side, because the whole country been screwing my people from day one. You know, I don't care who you pick. And, and everybody's playing everybody and we're just sucking it up and, and inviting it in. So that's that. But just think about how they act. They are very, very, very entitled. And so to think that an entitled person doesn't act out is not being realistic. But anyway... The bottom line is we need to be protectors and bottom line is we need to be more prepared. We need to take uh, the serious uh, ramifications and repercussions of digital access and dating online and understand what that means in the way of safety or the lack thereof and start doing something about it. That's all I'm going to share with you on this one. Again, if you believe in what we're doing in the community in the way of research, if you believe what we're doing in the way of touching lives and changing lives and advocating and fighting battles, all the things that happen on a daily basis, please look in the description box and show your love and your support to the family of Sade uh, Robinson and every other black young lady that has lost their lives senseless, senselessly to violence or to, or the fam to the families who have young black women uh, who are missing and unaccounted for and nobody's saying their names. Put their names in the uh, comment field. Make their names known and I'll share their names elsewhere. If you want to email me with pictures, I'll put them out there. But we've got to start being the voice for the voiceless. And on that note, I'm out of here. You guys have an unbelievable remainder of your day.